to do some clustering. That's what we want to do now. And I want to cover an algorithm that is, uh, I'm going to cover both, I'm going to do one unsupervised learning algorithm and two supervised. Uh, these are sort of the workhorses of the, of the field. And the first one I want to start with is what are called mixture models. Okay, uh, Mixture models are really widely used. These are almost all these models are based upon statistical analysis, and mixture models are no different. And they're very kind of simple in concept. So we often think about statistics and we think about uh, looking at random variables or, or variables and, and asking what kind of statistical distribution to display. And part of the way to answer that question is that you can sometimes formulate a probability distribution of some variable x. It's not quite so simple. Uh, oftentimes, this distribution is parametrized by some parameters, let's say theta k. So in other words, the theta k might have things like, OK, I want to parametrize the mean, the variance, uh, things of this issue. In fact, one of the most standard uh, distributions people assume, if there's nothing better to, to, to give you a better guess, is to do um, Gaussian distributions. And Gaussian distributions are completely characterized by some mean and some variance. So right, so if you're if you're Gaussian, then this theta k really is looking at two things, some mean and some variance. And the Gaussian distribution gives us something that we've known for a long time, which is, you know, the bell curve. You know, it's, it's some distribution like this, where you think, what's the probability of someone being over here? Well, here's the distribution of probabilities. And you can see most people are here at the peak. That's the, the peak of the bell curve. That's the, the mean uh, of this thing. And the area under this curve is 1. OK, so if you integrate this thing out, it's 1. And so you can start asking things like, OK, so I can completely characterize this mean and a variance uh, on my data. And then I can now use this representation of a data of a Gaussian to sort of tell me how, uh, what the statistical behavior or probability is of, 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 of my data happening in different places. OK, so that's the main idea. Now, what mixture models do is say, well, what if I have data from different data sets, but I have them combined? So for instance, in the dog-cat problem, I have cats, and I have dogs. And maybe I have some distribution for cats and dogs. All the mixture model does, it's a very simple concept. It just simply says, oh, well, if you have that, instead of having one distribution, why don't I have n distributions? Okay, in the dog-cat problem, we might want to only have two. And uh, so that's the kind of idea that's there, is how do you now formulate this thing to have those two distributions? Okay? And Gaussian mix or mixture models, that's their idea, is to say, take a mixture of these, of these probability distributions. And in being able to take this distribution of probabilities, what I want to do is figure out, how do I fit those distributions to most likely uh, give me the best prediction of my data. Okay, So that's kind of the main concept. Uh, so the concept really revolves around the following. So what I really want to do is start thinking about my overall probability distribution okay, of some variable uh, based upon some parameters theta is now going to be the following. Some little k big K here, of a series now, let's call them alpha K. And now what I have, something like this. So let's kind of get our heads around this. What it says is, I want the probability distribution of all my data. And what I'm going to assume is my data is a sum of a bunch of underlying probability distributions. Okay, So in other words, 
I'll have alpha 1 P1 plus alpha 2 P2 plus alpha 3 P3. And this here, K, is the number of clusters or number of probability distributions in the model. Okay? So this is similar to our K means in the sense that we get to pick that. So this is the unsupervised learning algorithm, right? We don't know ahead of time how many there should be. We're going to pick that just like we did in k-means. We picked the number of clusters. Here, we're essentially picking the number of clusters again. But now what we're doing with the clusters is saying, if I want two clusters, I want them to be made up of two distributions. And I get to pick what these distributions are. Now, the most common version of this is called Gaussian mixture models, or GMMs. In Gaussian mixtures, you pick Gaussians. And the Gaussians is parameterized by two variables, a mean and a variance, and an amine and a variance. So if you have two clusters, you'd have uh, a mu1 uh, sigma1 for the mean and variance of one of the clusters, and uh, a mu2 sigma2 for the other cluster. And then alpha here, alpha1 plus alpha2 plus all the way to alpha k, has to all add up to 1. Otherwise, you don't have, because you know that the probability of something has to go from 0 to 1. Okay? So that's the main idea. It's kind of as simple as that, okay? Mixture models do this. And what we're going to talk about in the code right now is we're going to apply Gaussian mixture models. And the Gaussian mixture models are just making an assumption that these P of Ks here are, in fact, just Gaussians, okay? So that's the main idea. We're not going to go into a lot of the mathematics about the algorithm to this, but the algorithm to actually determine this fit to the data is called the expectation maximization algorithm. And it's one of the top 10 algorithms uh, out there for data uh, mining and data analysis. Um, but at the heart of it is this simple concept. And the actual algorithm itself is not so hard to, to do. We won't go into the details, but we're going to execute it here uh, with MATLAB code. All right, so let me uh, erase some of this so we can get our MATLAB windows open. And then. We apply this algorithm onto the cat and dog data. Now, the interesting thing about the cat and dog data, right, is that we already know ahead of time that we have two clusters, uh, which is nice. Uh, and in many cases, you don't know that. And so what you try to pick is one of the part of the data analysis problems is, how do I pick the number of clusters? And so that is in itself a very interesting topic of research that people think about. But for right now, we're going to say for the cat and dog problem, I'm going to pick two clusters. I'm going to use this generalized uh, mixture, uh, Gaussian mixture model to try to do the classification uh, and regression. OK, so let's go to this. We have our MATLAB open. And in fact, more than that, if you remember where we left off, here we are. We have our training set. We have our test set. And just a refresher. Our training set is a random draw of 50 dogs stacked on top of 50 cats in the first three principal components. Okay, so X train will be a 100 by 3. Test is the remaining 30 dogs, remaining 30 cats, three columns, three features. So, training set, test set. Now, uh, for the generalized, uh, for the Gaussian mixture models, normally we don't withhold and, and train this way. We could just put them in there and just look for clusters and see what we get. But we're going to go ahead and treat it much like a supervised learning in the sense that we're going to use this training data to go out there, find clusters, get these best Gaussians fit to the data. Then once we have that, we'll go see how well it works by trying on this test data. So that's going to be the idea. So pretty simple algorithm. In fact, I'm going to show you in MATLAB how it goes. Here it is. We call variable GM. Uh, it's going to be fit GM dist. And you put in your training data, number of clusters. Ta-da! That's it. So what this is going to go is fit uh, Gaussian mixture distribution. So it's actually picking out Gaussians, right? It's going to say, look, I'm going to make up, all my data is made up a bunch of these uh, probability distributions, and they're going to be Gaussian. And what I'm going to do is go
go ahead and try to fit this on the training data, assuming there's two clusters. So you have to pick that two, and that's where it becomes interesting in the data analysis part, because here we know ahead of time it should be two. But in general, how do you pick that? That's a, that's a, that's a good question to ask, and it's a hard one to answer, actually. Okay? Um, but sometimes you can do it fairly simply. And at least for the data we're doing, it's, it's not that hard. Now what this is going to return to us, um, in this variable GM, what comes out of this fit GM distribution is the parameterization of those Gaussian distributions that come out. Okay? Now to be able to use it, you can just take that GM and save it. It's sort of an object now that you can use. And then you can use new data to throw in on this GM to classify new data. Okay? So uh, we're going to do the prediction. Let's call it pre will be the prediction, which will be cluster now, uh, GM X test. So the cluster is an interesting command. It works with various of these uh, statistical packages and, and uh, uh, clustering algorithms or, or, or classification algorithms. What you're going to send in the cluster is this, the results from this GM. So in other words, it's going to take in the parameters. It's going to recognize them as, oh, these are Gaussian mixture model fits because there's a tag in here to saying that. And then you can bring in your new test data. Okay? Let's actually call that X test, not, so right, it's going to be that. You turn in your test data, and what it's going to do is going to give you a prediction about what that test data is. Is it a cat? Is it a dog? Okay, so that's the kind of thing that uh, this is, allows us to do. Um, and so let's go ahead and run this. Okay. So, okay, pre is ones and twos. All it did is it took the data and it looked all the data and said, is this supposed to be, a, it basically says, if, it's a, if, it, if it thinks it's part of the first cluster, it'll say it's a one. If it's the second cluster, it's a two. So it's going to take all your data, and here it is. In fact, what we can do is, Let's start plotting this here. We're going to do a, a bar of pre, a bar chart. So we're going to see what the values are. And remember, there's 60. So let's go ahead and look at this thing. Oh, shoot. OK, hold on. Let me get rid of this figure one. Where am I? Where is this coming up? Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. Delete. And we'll come back down. OK. Here are the results. All right, so what it does is it classifies it, either gives it a score of a one or a two. Okay, and so what we've got here is all, uh, all those results. So, interesting, over here from about 30 on, you see this here from about 30 on, everything gets classified as a two. So that's actually where the cats are. Okay, so the first cluster is dogs, should be a one, uh, sorry, it should be a two, I think. The way that it doesn't, just because you get, it, what it does is it classifies it into ones or twos, and here what you're seeing is that um, the dogs are all over the place. Like some are classified as cats, some as dogs, whereas when you get to the cats, they're all classified as cats. So that's the one way to interpret this. So if, if it got a perfect classification, it should be all twos, and then all ones, okay? So this is the, uh, the basic idea now, and you can say, well, look, how many of them were supposed to be ones and then got a two, and how many were twos got a one, and then you can calculate an error. And in fact, you do a lot of error. It's having a very hard time under trying to understand what a dog is, okay? Now, this is one random realization. So if I do this again, I'll get a slightly different picture. Look at that. So this is, by the way, highlights <laughs> very clearly the need for cross-validation. Here's another result, completely different. And all it did was reshuffled the 50 dogs and the, the 50 dogs I'm going to train with and the 30 dogs I'm going to, I'm going to classify with. And you can see extremely different results. Let's do it another time. 
So if you're ever wondering if you do cross-validation, you always do cross-validation. I can't emphasize that enough. If there's one thing you should learn out of all this, cross-validate, okay? So this is it. So now, ultimately what you have here is you built a classifier right here. So you can put new data in and you can ask, what does it belong to? Which, which, one, of these, uh, uh, which one of these two clusters does it belong to, okay? So that's the, gonna be, that's the main idea behind um, uh, Gaussian mixture models, is that you can actually do exactly this. And it's a very simple command structure. Look at this, two lines. So build your training set, take your test set, fit, the, fit it to a uh, Gaussian mixture distribution, and then you can cluster the test data on, on using the cluster command. And it's going to give you back these scores here that you can actually then do, do whatever you want to do with it. You can, try to figure out what the accuracy of your code is uh, or things of that nature, okay? So that is uh, method number one, unsupervised, okay? So there's two key unsupervised methods you must know, k-means and uh, mixture models. In more particular, I would say Gaussian mixture models. If you know those two, you're in really good shape on the unsupervised side, okay? And the unsupervised algorithm went on right here. And this is the unsupervised portion because it's, you just let this thing go and figure out, I, you pick some clusters and see what it does. Okay, so that's method number one. We're going to move on to some other methods here uh, momentarily. Mm -hmm.